Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 5 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from June 2010. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. The diagram shows the velocity time graph for a lorry delivering waste to a recycling centre. The graph consists of six straight line segments. The lorry reverses in a straight line from a stationary position on a way bridge before coming to rest. It deposits the waste and then moves forward in a straight line accelerating to a maximum speed of 3 meters per second. It maintains this speed for 4 seconds and then decelerates coming to rest at the waybridge. In part 1 we need to calculate the distance from the waybridge to the point where the lorry deposits the waste. So the first thing we need to do is look at the graph and identify the bit that part 1 is talking about. So if we read part of the question again, it says the lorry reverses in a straight line from a stationary position on a waybridge before coming to rest. And then it deposits the waste. So we're just looking at this first section of the graph here between 0 and 20 seconds. We're looking for the distance it travels. On a velocity time graph, remember displacement is represented by the area under the graph. And if we calculated this displacement here, it would be negative. But as we're just thinking about distance, we don't need to worry about the sign. So if we want to work out the area of this triangle here, we can use half base times height. So the displacement is given by half multiplied by the base, which is 20, multiplied by the height, which is 3. A half of 20 is 10, multiplied by 3 is 30 meters. In part 2, we need to calculate the time which elapses between the lorry leaving the waybridge and returning to it. If you want to, pause the video and read the question again. And what you'll find is that the whole graph represents the lorry leaving the waybridge here pausing for a while and then returning to the waybridge here. So what we're trying to figure out is what is the time at this final point over here? Well we know the lorry takes 60 seconds to get to this point of the graph. All we need to do is figure out how much longer it takes to get to this point of the graph here. To do that we need to consider that the lorry here is moving away from the waybridge for the first 20 seconds and then afterwards it's coming back to the waybridge. So if it started from the waybridge, gone away and come back, the displacement away from the waybridge, this part of the graph here, must be the same as the displacement on the way back to the waybridge here. The only difference will be is that the signs will be opposite. So we know this bit here is actually a displacement of negative 30. That means this part here must have a displacement of positive 30. And from here, we can just think about the area of a trapezium. If we know the area of the trapezium is 30 and we know the height of the trapezium is 3, in the question we're told about this part of the trapezium here. It says it maintains this speed for 4 seconds. So the only part of the graph that's got constant speed other than when it's at rest here is this bit. So that part of the trapezium must be 4 seconds. The part that we're interested in finding is how long it takes to get from 60 seconds to here. We'll call that t. So all we need to do now is think about the area of a trapezium with one of the sides unknown. So we've got a displacement of 30, which equals half the sum of the parallel sides, which will be 4 plus t, multiplied by the height, 3. If we simplify this a little bit, to remove the half, we'll multiply by 2. that gives give us 60 on this side. We'll divide through by the 3. We get 20 on this side. On the right hand side we're left with 4 plus t. So to get t we just subtract 4 from both sides to get t equals 16 seconds. But remember all we've just found is the part from 60 to the end here. If that's 16 seconds then the total time will be 60 plus 16 which is 76 seconds. Part 3 says given that the acceleration of the lorry when it is moving forwards is 0.4 meters per second squared, calculate its final deceleration. On a velocity time graph, acceleration is represented by the gradient of the line. So this 0.4 meters per second squared here represents the gradient of this line. To calculate the gradient of a line, you do the distance up divided by the distance across. So here we're looking at the change in velocity divided by the change in time, which is actually the definition for acceleration. So here's the formula we're going to use, A equals delta V over delta T. We know the acceleration, that's 0.4 meters per second squared. Delta V is just the height of this trapezium, which is 3. Delta T is the part we're trying to find. So to rearrange this, we'd multiply up by the delta T and divide through by the 0.4. So we get delta T is 3 divided by 0.4. That's the same as 30 divided by 4. Half it and half it again, we get 7.5 seconds. 
So what we've worked out here is the amount of time to get from 60 seconds here to this time here where the velocity is at 3 meters per second. Now we can think about the deceleration phase. Remember in the last part we figured out the time taken for this whole part of the graph here was 16 seconds. So we'll start with the 16 and we'll subtract the two parts that aren't involved in this deceleration phase. In the question it told us this part here we used before is 4. This part we just found is 7.5 and 16 subtract 4 subtract 7.5 gives us 4.5 seconds. That means the decelerating phase which we're going to look at now takes 4.5 seconds. The change in velocity is the same, it's going from 3 to 0. Unlike before, we don't know the acceleration this time, so we'll call it A. And because it's going down, the acceleration will be negative. So we get the distance it goes down, which is 3, divided by the distance across, which is 4.5. And if you divide the top and the bottom by 1.5, you end up with negative 2 thirds. So to three significant figures, the acceleration is minus 0.667 meters per second squared. 